You're listening to the weekly partial podcast with Ari Goldweg, recorded with Hashem's never-ending assistance in Ramat Beit Shemesh, Israel, 5780-2020. This week's partial is Parsha's Bashalach. And usually, when I create the partial podcast, I usually give it a name after I finish recording it and as I'm putting it up in all the different places where I put it. This time, however, I have a name from the beginning. It's the moment of redemption. The moment of redemption. That's what I'd like to talk about today. I'd like to talk about understanding because we are personally, and as a nation, we are personally very close to the true moment of ultimate redemption, I believe. And it's important to understand what happens at the moment of redemption, what it looks like, so we can prepare ourselves, but also because it, it reveals something to us which is extremely deep, extremely beautiful, and extremely important to understand. And even if the moment of redemption is in 5 years, 10 years, 50 years, however long, or even if it's this year, whenever the moment of redemption is, we need to understand it actually applies to me right now, in this very moment, even before we get to that moment of redemption. Before I continue with my Devar Torah, I would like to remind you that I'm working on a brand new album, a brand new CD. We have Baruch Hashem raised over $15,000, over 160 backers, arigoldwag.com slash new album. And we need to get to $25,000, which Bezrat Hashem, I'm confident that we will. And I encourage you to please visit that site and to contribute at whatever level you're able. And I thank those who have already done so. And uh, it's about these messages, powerful, spiritual messages given over with music has an incredible impact. Okay, that being said, here we are. We're at the point of redemption. We're at the moment of redemption, Parshas B'Shalach. And the Jewish people have been sent out by Paro. And the Jewish people, it's clear to Paro and his men that the Jewish people, although they said they were going to leave for only a few days, they're planning to leave for good. And so Paro and his men run after the Jewish people. And the Torah tells us that, as we all know, the, the Jewish people go into the water. The water splits for them. The Pharaoh and his men run after them. The water closes in on them, as the Torah describes. Now, that is really the moment of redemption. That is really the point at which the Jewish people become free. Because the way that a slave becomes free is if the master no longer is alive. That's the moment of redemption. That's the point at which the Jews are free. And they realize that and they sing. Az Yashar Moshe. They sing the song of redemption at that moment. Not at Makas Bechoros, not in last week's Parsha. Not when Moshe Avinu comes and says he's going to redeem them. It's this moment that they see their redemption has occurred. Now, <coughs> I brought these three psukim to your attention in the past, in past years. But I'd like to bring them once again to our attention because there's something magical or uh, magical is not perhaps the right word, but there's something awesome, powerful, spiritual, deep. In these three psukim, as Rashi points out in Masechah Sukkah, there are three psukim we say that uh, on, on Sukkot we say, Ani v'hoi and we refer to Hashem as I v'hoi, we have to know what the word means. But we refer to, the. F- those are two different names of Hashem. There are, there are three sets of 72 letter, there are 72, I'm sorry, there are 72 sets of three letter names of Hashem that are derived as Rashi in Sukkah. This is not Nister, this is not Secrets of the Torah, this is something that's in the revealed Torah. We speak about it. They are revealed. These verses are set, three verses of 72 letters. It's very interesting. It's chapter 14, verses 20, 21, and 22. The Psukim, the verses in Hebrew, contain each one of them exactly 72 letters. And I'd like to read you the Psukim. This is the point, as the Jewish people, it's overnight, the Jewish people have been chased after by Pharaoh and his legions. They are about to pass through the waters of the Yamsuf, of the Sea of Reeds, on dry land. And so we are at the moment of redemption, we are at the moment, it's it's about to happen. It's It's... Everyone is uh, feeling the metach, as we say in Hebrew. They're feeling that suspense. 
And we have these three psukim. Vayavo bein machane Mitzrayim uvein machane Yisrael. The Pasuk says that Hashem sent an angel to come between the encampment of the Egyptians and the encampment of the people of Israel. Vayihi ha'anon v'achoyshech. There was a cloud and there was darkness. Vayoyer es halayla. It lit up the night. What did? The cloud and the darkness. What does that mean? Vileikar of ze el ze kol halayla. They didn't come close to each other the entire night. Meaning, the Jewish people were there. They had every right to be afraid. I'm sorry, I skipped one of the Pesukim. That's the middle Pesuk. Okay, the middle Pesuk describes how the angel came. I want to read the Pesuk before. I'm sorry about that. Vayisa malach ha'elekim. The, the angel of Hashem traveled. Ha'ha'ilech lefnei machan Yisrael that had been going in front of the Jewish people that had been guiding them. Vayelech macharem and it went behind them. Vayisa amur ha'onam yipneihem. The cloud that had been in front of them went Ayamal Macharem and stood behind them. Okay? So it created the, the that which had been guiding the Jewish people, the angel that Hashem had sent, as it were, the cloud which they saw as the physical manifestation of Hashem's spiritual presence that had been leading them. It went and it moved between the Jewish people and the Egyptians. And as we saw in that second bus, which we already read, it there was darkness, there was clouds, there was light. And nobody, there was no interaction between the two encampments. And the third pasuk, which is very important, Vayet Moshe Yadai al Hayam. Moshe stretched out his hand over the sea. Vayelech Hashem Asayam Beruach Kadim Aza Kalalayla. Hashem sent an, a, a westerly wind, very powerful, all night long. Vayasem Asayam Lacharava, and Hashem caused the sea to split. Caused it to become dry land. The sea split. These three psukim contain seven, the 72 letter name of Hashem, the 72, the name of 72, we call it. The three, the 72 sets of three letters, names of Hashem. You take the first letter of the first pasuk, you combine it with the second, the last letter of the second pasuk, and again, the first letter of the third pasuk. So if we look at that, it's a vav, and then a mem. I'm sorry, a vav, and then a hey, and then a vav, like that's vahu, right? Ani vahu, ani is the one of the middle ones, and vahu is the first one. Okay, so that's what we have. And, so it's, a, it's an amazing thing. This is the 72 letter name of Hashem, the most powerful name of Hashem that exists. The, the, the name that represents, right, eight, 72 is in itself is 18 times 4. Right? 18 is chai. Whatever that whatever the significance of that is, whatever the idea of that is. But we have the this powerful name is derived from these three psukim. So we need to understand what are these three psukim and we need to understand that this is the moment of redemption, as we've said. I'm gonna keep repeating. And somehow this name and these three psukim of 72 letters each teach us something amazing and powerful. Now before I get to the teaching. I want to share with you the Ramban on the third Pasuk. The third Pasuk said that Moshe sp- stretched out his arm on the, on the, over the sea, and Hashem sent this awesome wind. Now what was the point of this wind? What was the purpose of it? So the Ramban says, Hashem had an intent here. His intent by sending this wind was that it should look like the wind is causing the water to split, causing the sea to split, and causing it to become dry land. Talks about a wind coming and, and drying out the, the, the sea. What's the purpose? It was in order for the Egyptians to be destroyed. Maybe it's the wind that's causing the sea to become dried out. Perhaps it's not Hashem's hand 
that's doing this for the Jewish people, but rather it's a natural occurrence, a natural phenomenon. Even though it's not possible for the wind to split the sea in such a way that there's there's there were twelve paths there for each of the shvatim, the the, the you know it was it were, there were walls there. It's not humanly, you know, it's not physically possible. I would say. Still, Hashem wanted them to make a mistake, and they made the mistake that it was a possible natural occurrence. Why did they follow after them? They, they committed suicide. They were nuts. They walked into the water. Don't go there. Why? Because they had such a great desire to cause bad to the Jewish people, to, to bring evil upon them. This is what the verse means when it says, that Hashem promises, I'm going to strengthen the hearts, I'm going to harden the hearts of, of Pharaoh, and they came after him. After them, Hashem hardened their hearts so that they would say, "Let me run after them into the sea." And no one will save them from me. They forgot. They momentarily forgot the fact, which they already knew. They had already experienced. They had already realized that it was Hashem who was fighting on their behalf in Egypt. And now Hashem was going to fight on their behalf at the sea. Unbelievable Ramban. Unbelievable also, like, to think about it. Like, they had just experienced all ten of the Makkas. They had, the firstborn of every single family had died. To the point that they said, get out of here. They pushed them out and they said, pray on our behalf as well. Bless us as well. They gave them all of their gold. They said, get out of Egypt. And now they come running after the Jews. Into the sea, they, they have this imagination, this imaginary idea that it's a natural phenomenon, the water is splitting. So strange. So strange. And I want to point out a few things in these Pesukim, and we're, go- we're going to come now to the point to understand what does it mean the moment of redemption. Vayisa, first Pesuk again. Vayisa ma'achalakim ha'elech m'nei ma'achan Yisrael v'ayelech ma'acharem. The the angel that was guiding the Jewish people, which means Hashem, His presence, which was to be seen in the world through the angel, through the Anan, through the cloud. They knew, the Jewish people knew, this is Hashem guiding them. Not actually, not physically. Hashem is not a cloud. He's beyond anything physical. He can't, doesn't manifest in a physical way. But, they knew that that's what it meant. That's what it represented to them. It goes and it's and it's, it's now it's standing between the Jewish people and Egyptians. What is the purpose? There was a cloud and darkness. For the Jewish people, there was light. For the Egyptians, there was darkness. There was a separation, which we already saw in Egypt, right? Throughout the plagues, throughout all of the ten makas. We saw that there was a separation between the Jewish people and the Egyptians. All of, all of the judgment that came down into the world, it only affected the Egyptians. It did not affect the Jewish people. Here again, here again we see, in the moment of redemption, we see something awesome. And that is that the same exact spiritual force, which is a cloud, which is represented by the cloud, which leads the Jewish people, helps the Jewish people, guides the Jewish people, It stands between the Jewish people and the Egyptians. It separates between those who are good and those who are evil. Those whose intent is to follow God's will, those whose intent is to defy God's will and to cause bad to occur to those who are following God's will. Okay? They don't come close, they don't touch each other anymore. Okay? That means that before this time, before the moment of redemption, the Jews are subservient, subjugated to the Egyptians. Evil is ruling. Evil is, has, it, it's wrong. It's wrong. How can you take people? They've done nothing wrong. If anything, they've caused you to be alive. Yosef, it wasn't that long ago. It was not so long ago that Joseph had been alive. He only died some hundred and something years before. I mean, it's, if we think about it, Chavitz Chaim lived hundred years, less than a hundred years ago. We haven't forgotten about him. We haven't forgotten about his 
his contributions to the Jewish people, and you see that that's true of of world leaders. You know, if you want to Lahavdil, you look at the look at America. We remember Benjamin Franklin. We remember George Washington, Abraham Lincoln. These people lived two hundred years ago. It's not that long ago. Yosef lived less than that amount of time before. They forgot, and they subjugated wrongly the Jewish people through their evil, through their evil intent. People who were righteous, the Jewish people were righteous. They were good. They accused them of being bad. They accused them that they would join with their enemies. The Egyptians tried to subjugate them because of that. They did subjugate them. Now comes the moment of truth. Now comes the moment of redemption. And what happens in the moment of redemption, hear this, folks, because this is the bottom line. When we get to the moment of redemption, it's the moment of truth. It's the moment of truth. Which means that all the lies that have been told until now, all of the falsehoods that have been told until now, all of the, we are higher than you, we are greater than you, you are our subjects, you are our slaves. It's all a lie. The truth becomes apparent. HaKadosh Baruch Hu comes in the moment of redemption and there's a light in the world. And that light shines. It's a light of truth and it shines on those who are the true bearers of truth. And it separates between those who are telling the truth, those who have been committed to the truth throughout the centuries, throughout reality, throughout the time, throughout the times of Gullus, of exile. And it says, here we are. Here's who's real. and Here's who's fake. Here's who is the real people who are really committed to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, And here's, here are the people who put on a show pretending to be committed and they weren't. Here's the people who are the true heirs of Eretz Yisrael, of the land of Israel. And here are the fraudulent ones who pretend to be the heirs and they are not. Here are the people who are destined to be saved, to walk through the Yamsuf. And here are the people who are destined to be destroyed by that very same miracle. And that's the Egyptians. That's what happens in the moment of truth. That's what happens in the moment of redemption. What happens is it's just... A revelation of truth. Because the way that HaKadosh Baruch Hu set up the world is that we wait. We wait. HaKadosh Baruch Hu waits. There's something called Rachamin. There's something called mercy. There's something called Chesed. There's Hashem's kindness. And His kindness means that it has to look like things are not really the way they are. We all know that if you do good, ultimately, you'll get good. Right? Persons, a person is ultimately results of his own actions person who does evil, does more evil and more evil, eventually is going to destroy himself. That's the reality. And here we come to the third Pasuk. Here we come to the third Pasuk. Which is that Moshe Rabbeinu spread, raises his hand. And what happens? The trap is set. How could, you be, how could you be fooled by this trap? The wind doesn't make water split. Never in history has the wind caused an, an, uh, an ocean to split in such a way that you could walk through on dry land. No such thing. You can't. How can you make such a mistake? And the answer is an amazing thing. And it's Pashat. It's so simple. And it's such a, such a foundational idea for us. The person who wants to see bad, who has, as the Ramban said, has a taiva to cause, he has a desire to cause bad to somebody else. Who has a desire to cause, and you can just think about this in light of current events, what's going on in America, uh, in, in politics. I don't want to get into that, I don't want to say it. I'm not interested in Bepamale, but you see it clearly, this exact idea. When you are out to get somebody, you don't care about the truth. You don't care where your actions are leading you. You don't see the fact that it's impossible the, the, the winds don't do this. The winds don't separate the water. You just go because you want to get them. You want to get them. The Egyptians wanted to get the Jewish people. And this is the moment of truth. And this is what happens in the moment of redemption. Look at the story of, of Purim. The moment of redemption. Haman comes in. He has this awesome idea. He wants to hang Mordechai on this, this tree. He ends up hanging on the tree. They're, they want to run after them, destroy them. There's no one to protect them. And they get destroyed. You will see in our times, you will see that those who wish to destroy the Jewish people will be destroyed. You will see it. They are running into the sea, headlong into the sea. Those who wish to destroy Klal Yisrael. There is no hope for them. 
And they don't see it. They're blind because they're so driven by hatred. You can look at World War II. The undoing of Hitler was the fact that he wouldn't divert his, his manpower from the destruction of the Jews. And as a result of that, he lost the war. And ultimately, he was destroyed. That's always true. Evil destroys itself. Evil runs headlong into its own destruction. That's the three psukim of, of 72 letters. This is the ultimate name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the ultimate name of Hashem, because it represents the fact that ultimately the truth prevails. Ultimately, the reality we see at the end, at the moment of redemption, at the, at the moment of truth, we see wh- who is who. We see what's really true. Who all along was committed to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, was committed to God, and who all along were perpetrators of evil. And cover it up as they might. As much as the fake news would like to say what they say is the truth, the real truth is revealed at the end. And evil destroys itself. And that is what we're witnessing right now, I believe, in all of the world events that are going on. And that is what we're witnessing as we come closer and closer to the moment of ultimate redemption. I want to bless you and ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us to attach ourselves to the real truth so that when the, indeed, indeed when the moment of truth arrives, we are the ones who experience the light. We are the ones who say, Ani v'hoi, I and you Hashem. We are together with the Kodesh Baruch Hu. That's what's revealed. Hashem should help us to, to indeed stay on the side of good, stay on the side of toiv. Hashem should bring darkness and destruction to all of those who are on the side of evil, all those who are the enemies of the Jewish people, and Hashem should bring light and redemption to all of those who are supporting the Jewish people throughout the world, and all of those who indeed are the people of Israel. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.